Hey there, Brainiacs. Today we're going to be talking about sleepwalking, also known as somnambulism. We'll talk about the causes, the treatments, and the horror stories surrounding this peculiar sleep problem. We'll also discuss celebrities who have been caught sleepwalking, and we'll debunk a few myths about this mysterious sleep disorder. We're going to reveal the good, the bad, and sometimes embarrassing truth about this sleepy time activity that makes people go bump in the night. Quick quiz, is it actually dangerous to disturb a sleepwalker while they're sleeping? The answer might surprise you. Watch until the end to find out. What is sleepwalking? Before we dive in, let's talk about the definition, causes, and behaviors associated with sleepwalking. When a person is asleep, their brain usually shuts down so it can recharge. It's kind of like plugging in your iPhone, only it's way more complicated and your brain doesn't hook up to a USB cable. Now, when you fall asleep, your body is supposed to shut down and reset. But for some people, that doesn't always happen. People with a sleepwalking disorder can move their bodies around even though their brains are asleep. Think of it like this. Imagine a car with no driver, but there's a brick on the gas pedal. The car is moving, but there is nobody in the vehicle to steer or hit the brakes. Sounds pretty dangerous, right? So what should you do? First, let's dive into the Brainiac facts to get a closer look. Sleepwalking behaviors. This sleep disorder isn't just limited to walking. Other behaviors of people with somnambulism include sitting up in bed, talking, shouting or screaming, sexual activities, opening the eyes and staring with a blank expression, engaging in dangerous tasks like driving, and even embarrassing activities like urinating in closets. Brainiac definition time. Sleep terrors, also known as night terrors, cause people to have episodes of screaming, intense fear, and flailing while asleep. Sleepwalking can also be common in people with certain mental health conditions, such as dementia. People with substance abuse disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and anxiety disorders are also at greater risk. Certain medications can increase the likelihood of sleepwalking, such as antidepressants and over-the-counter sleep medication. Right now, it's time for a pop quiz. Do you know or have you ever been a sleepwalker? Yes, yes, no, yes. If you answered yes, yes. you're not alone. As it turns out, sleepwalking is surprisingly common. According to Dr. Giuseppe Plazzi of the Department of Neurological Sciences at the University of Bologna in Italy, 30% of kids between ages 5 and 12 have experienced at least one sleepwalking episode. So that means that 3 out of 10 kids might be wandering around their houses at any given night. That's a lot of tiny sleep zombies. Sleepwalking incidents tend to taper off as people grow into adulthood. In fact, only 2 to 3 percent, or one in every 250 adults, report having a sleepwalking episode at least once per week. So what causes these strange and mysterious nighttime journeys? Here's the nerdy science scoop. About two or three hours after we tuck ourselves in and go nighty-night, we drift into a stage of sleep called NREM, or non-rapid eye movement. It falls between stages three and four of the sleep cycle. Warning. This is the danger zone for sleepwalkers. In this stage of sleep, a person with normal sleep behavior will stay cozy and snug with her teddy bear under the covers. But for a sleepwalker in this stage, only part of their brain is actually asleep, and part of their brain is awake. So while their vision and cognitive thinking are in the dream world, their bodies are moving around in the real world. It can be a very confusing and rather dangerous state for a person to be. And it's a circumstance under which a lot of weird and very unfortunate incidents have occurred. Horror stories. For Beyonce, the statement, I woke up like this, is a positive one. But that is definitely not the case for 77-year-old sleepwalker James Currens. Here's what happened. Mr. Currens got out of bed and went on a sleepwalking adventure out his front door with cane in hand. His nighttime stroll led him to a nearby pond. Before he knew it, he woke up chest deep in the water. He was unable to move or get out because his body was stuck in the mud. Anyone would be pretty freaked out about this predicament alone. But what made the incident even more terrifying was that he found himself surrounded by alligators. He had to use his cane to keep the hungry creatures away while shouting for help. Thankfully, one of his neighbors heard him yelling and called the police. 
The police used lights to scare the alligators away long enough to free Mr. Curran. The crazy part is that he escaped completely unharmed, except for a few small cuts from the falling into the pond. Talk about a sticky situation. And we just got a fine from the bad pun department. <sighs> Moving on. Here's another incident that occurred from sleepwalking. If you've got a fear of heights, you might want to sit this one out. So apparently, a man was walking home at 2 a.m. when he looked up and saw something quite alarming. There was a girl asleep at the top of a very tall, inactive construction crane. He immediately called emergency services. It wasn't until the emergency crew arrived that they realized the girl was sound asleep, curled up at the top of the crane. This made the rescue mission a lot more complicated because the firefighter was afraid that if he woke her up, she would become startled and fall. He carefully checked her pockets and found her cell phone. The firefighter used her cell phone to call her mom, who told him that the girl, who was only 15 years old, was a regular sleepwalker. They decided that the best course of action was to call her phone and let the ringtone wake her. It worked. The girl woke up, and the crew was able to safely bring her down from the crane. It turns out she had climbed 130 feet up and 40 feet across all in her sleep. Did you know there's such a thing as sleep eating? Leslie Cusack surely does. This 55-year-old woman from England has had to put alarms on her doors so they will wake her before she gets to the kitchen. Sleep eating may seem like the least dangerous sleep behavior on this list, but it's not as harmless as you think. Leslie has been known to cook with her gas stove while asleep, which is obviously a fire hazard. Not to mention, there's the added risk to her and the rest of her household if she leaves the gas on in the kitchen. This sleepy time chef had to actually join a gym and watch what she eats during the day because of her power eating in the middle of the night. She has been known to eat as much as 2,500 calories during one of her sleep eating sessions. That equals about 10 bowls of ice cream or about seven sandwiches. That's pretty impressive for an unconscious nosher. What's even more disturbing is that Leslie would often cook dishes filled with surprising inedible ingredients, such as Vaseline, paint, and laundry detergent. A long time ago, a detective named Robert Ledru was living in Paris when he was called to solve a murder mystery. The local police were having a lot of trouble trying to figure it out. Since Detective Ledru was the finest cop in the city, it seemed he was the best one to solve this case. On the night in question, another Paris native by the name of André Monet had been shot and was found dead at the local beach. The only clues were a bullet, which was far too common at the time to be traceable, and some footprints left by the murderer. Ledru's heart sank when he examined the footprints and realized that the killer was missing a big toe on his right foot. You see, Ledru was also missing his big toe on the same foot. His mind jumped back to a few nights before when he had awakened to find that his socks were wet. This led him to discover that it was he who had murdered Monsieur Monet while he was sleepwalking, which was brought on by syphilis. Imagine the surprise of the French police when Ledru turned himself in as the perpetrator of the horrible crime. At first, they didn't believe it was him, so they conducted an experiment to see if what he was saying could be true. They held Ledru in a jail cell overnight so they could see if he tried to sleepwalk. Sure enough, the first night in the cell, Ledru did get up and walk around in his sleep. Still unconvinced, they decided to put a gun in his cell the following night. That night, he shot at the guards in his sleep, proving once and for all that he was Monet's murderer. Prosecutors decided that he could not be held accountable for his crime since he had been asleep at the time, but they also acknowledged that his sleepwalking made him a danger to society so they exiled him to a farm in the countryside. Ledru lived out the rest of his days on that farm. He had to be under the care of nurses and guards, so he couldn't carry out any more comatose capers. Jennifer Aniston told US Weekly that she is a lifelong sleepwalker. She shared that one time she walked out of her house and was awakened by the home security alarm. She said the alarm scared the heck out of her. She revealed that when she woke up, she was out by the pool equipment in the backyard. Apparently, Brad Pitt, who was her husband at the time, was terrified because he heard the alarm, but Jennifer was nowhere to be found. And this wasn't the first time when she decided to go for a stroll in her sleep. When she was a child, she would walk into the living room and have a full conversation with her mom. In the morning, she had no recollection of the conversation. Chris Colfer from the TV show Glee has got Jennifer beat. 
On The Ellen Show, Chris shared that his mom has funny stories of finding him sitting on the couch and eating bowls of cereal while being totally asleep. Chris shared that he started taking sleeping pills to help with the disorder. And that's when a really bizarre sleep behavior emerged. According to Chris, he started shopping online in his sleep. He said he would receive random packages from his sleepy online shopping excursions. He would open them up to reveal things like the complete series of The Carol Burnett Show or a life-size poster of Lady Gaga. The strangest package he got contained a huge framed portrait of Marie Antoinette. Well, the subconscious wants what it wants. There is even something called the Ambien Defense in a court of law. The Ambien Defense has helped several defendants get acquitted from serious crimes because they committed the crimes while under the influence of Ambien. The makers of the drug have been forced to print a warning on the label, saying that medications in the hypnotic class, such as Ambien, carry occasional side effects. These side effects include sleepwalking, abnormal thinking, and strange behavior, such as sleep driving, sleep eating, or sleep shopping. It got so bad that users sued the makers of the drug. The attorney for this class action suit called people in this Ambien blackout state Ambien zombies and claimed that they were eating things like buttered cigarettes and eggs complete with the full shells. Several Ambien users have ended up behind the wheel, causing serious accidents while asleep and under the influence of Ambien. One woman took the medication and went to bed, only to wake up six hours later barefoot in a jail cell still wearing her pajamas. Apparently, she got up, ran a bath, took her dog for a walk, and then got in her car and crashed into another vehicle. This woman used the Ambien defense and was able to get off with a suspended license and probation. It turns out that Ambien may not be the best solution to insomnia after all. One celebrity wrote a memoir, which became a movie about his sleepwalking adventures and how he nearly died in a sleepwalking accident. Comedian Mike Birbiglia was on tour in Washington when he had a nightmare. He dreamt that there was a guided missile headed toward his hotel room. In real life, Mike climbed onto the windowsill and jumped out of the window of his hotel room. Although he fell two stories, he survived. He had to get 33 stitches for gashes in his legs from the fall. After that, he decided to visit a sleep specialist for overnight observation. When they hooked him up to the machines, they discovered that Mike was suffering from a dopamine deficiency. Dopamine is the chemical that your brain releases to paralyze your body while you sleep so you don't act out your dreams. This was a major problem for Mike. He shared that people who have this dopamine deficiency tend to be running away from some type of scary situation in their dreams, and that's why they act it out in their sleep. He said in rare instances, people have actually killed someone while remaining asleep. And that brings us to our final question. Just how dangerous is it to wake up a sleepwalker? There's a rumor going around that waking a sleepwalker may cause them to have a heart attack, go into shock, or suffer brain damage. This is false. The truth is, it's sometimes necessary to wake a sleepwalker so he or she doesn't hurt themselves or someone else. But be careful if you need to wake them. They may think they are being attacked and unconsciously lash out at the person waking them up. Sleep experts suggest gently guiding them back to bed while touching them as minimally as possible. If that doesn't work, they suggest making a loud noise a safe distance away from them to jar them out of their sleep. That's Brainiac's take on sleepwalking. If you have a sleepwalking story to share, leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel to be the first to see the latest brain candy videos from Brainiac. See you next time.